Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give God all the praise, honor, and glory. This is your host, Elder Anton Seals, Elder Jennifer Seals. In her absence, we give God praise, honor, and glory. And we are excited as we come to the end of 2021. And all of you on the line, I know that you have so much to be grateful for and you praise God. If you just take a few seconds, just say glory to God. Thank you, God, Hello. for the wonderful Hello. works that you've already done in our lives. We praise you on this podcast. Uh, the Tabernacle of Fire, the Tabernacle of Fire, where we meet every Thursday. We lift up the name of Jesus at 7 p.m. And this is our 50th week, two weeks shy from our first year in podcast. Mm. And we're grateful. And Lord, we thank you, God, in the name of Jesus for the anointed vessels that have been on this line, oh God. We thank you for the many gifts and the talents, oh God, that you've allowed us to, to open our hearts, oh God, that you've led us, oh God, you've stretched us, oh God. And we're thanking you that not that we're worthy, but because of your grace and mercy, oh God, we thank you tonight, oh God, for a special yes, guest, Lord. oh God, by the name of Evangelist Adelia, oh God. Uh, we thank you, God, for Adelia and uh, Deloney. Last name is Deloney. And we want to worship and adore God and thank you, God, that you get mm. all the praise, honor, and yes, the glory, oh God. We started oh God. this year giving you praise and praying about yeah. miracles and signs and wonders. So, yes. Lord, even as we pray through the week, these are praying men and women that have been on this mm. podcast, people that may not be pastors mm. or ministers, but have a love for God and have come, God, that you might shed light and hope, oh God, over troubled yes, water, God. bridges are built, and hope is given into the ocean in the name of Jesus. So I've got yes, a lot God. to be grateful Hallelujah. for. Lord, let us keep our eyes stayed yes. on Jesus, oh God, in this dark Again, season. All side. these individuals, mm. oh God, that hear this, you are a vessel of the Lord. And so if you're empty, you will be filled up every time you get on this yes. podcast. We believe that God yes, is pouring yes, out yes. The in the name of Jesus and we count yes, it done yes, for your glory. We thank every evangelist that's on the line right now. We give you praise, honor, and glory. This is your host, yes, Elder God. Anton uh, Seal Sr. And I am just excited about what God is doing. In yes. spite of what it looks like in the world, yes, I come God. to tell Hallelujah. you that Jesus is here. He's born yes, and he's going to come yes, back, God. but he's with you right now. Hallelujah. So we're on every Thursday at 7 o'clock and we will be entering yes. in January 2022 hallelujah yes. hallelujah yes, and as we go into january 2022 we also will be hosting a new class beginning in january the 18th at 2 p.m and we're praying about some other things so keep us uh ags ministry in your prayers and elder jennifer seals and i as we continue to venture to do what god has given us to do praise and praise and about our special guest tonight i just want you to know tonight she's going to be talking about her topic miracles and signs signs and wonders. For those of you that are just coming on, our special guest is Ardelia uh, Evangelist, Ardelia Deloney, and we thank you, God, for her presence tonight. Mm -hmm. And she is a member, an active member, oh God, of Victory Apostolic Church located in Matson, Illinois, under the pastorate of Reverend uh, Pastor Andrew Singleton, Jr., she was also saved and filled with the Holy Ghost 37 years ago. Um, and so, God, we thank you for the anointing on her life and the refilling, the Lord, that you have just given to her in recent months and weeks. Oh, God, coming out of uh, how you saved her from COVID in the name of Jesus and brought her through the storms of life. She answered the call to ministry in 1989. And God has anointed her to go forth with the power of the Holy Ghost in preaching and teaching. I've been in your Bible classes, and I know the power of the Holy Ghost that moves when you're teaching, hallelujah, and the truth seekers, hallelujah, as well as ministering in the prophetic, and yes, the prophetic gift that you may hear tonight, I'm not going to say may hear, but listen for it, hallelujah, is here, is here, and so she ministers in the prophetic as well, and has ministered at international conferences, and is also a conference speaker. Evangelist Deloney is a licensed ordained evangelist, she received her theological credentials from Anion, I think I'm pronouncing it right, or Anon uh, Bible Ian. College. Ian. 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 Ian Bible College and graduated Dixmore uh, Bible Institute. She received a bachelor's degree from uh, in biblical studies 
from Chicagoland Christian Bible Institute and Theological Seminary. She also received her master's degree in theology from Coveting the Theology Seminary, summa cum laude, and is a recipient of the prestigious Covington President Award. Evangelist Deloney is also the founder and teacher of, war, uh, of Warriors in Action Outreach Ministries, where she teaches others the importance of spiritual warfare and deliverance. Lord, if we need it, if there's ever time we need spiritual warfare people trained up and ready to be on the battlefield so we thank her for that gift and thank god she has uh, has been a prayer warrior with an international intercessory prayer network for many years and also a christian counseling advisor and mentor for countless countless numbers of young adults she's a member of the ministerial alliance ministerial alliance at victory apostolic church and has also been a network coordinator for the Victory's Women's Department. Presently, she is serving on the Victory Committee Outreach for Christian Education Department and is the chaplain for the Victory of Spiritual Care Ministries. Hallelujah. That's just a little bit about her background. And so, God, we thank you for the anointing that we will experience today on this podcast. We welcome everyone that's on. God bless you, Minister Xavier. God bless you, Sister Michelle. God bless you, Evangelist Doris, who will be on sometime with us in March. We're looking forward to that. So we just thank God. Thank you, Evangelist Bowley, for being on again with us. Michelle Durham, uh, Durham, thank you for being on. And 30, 13, several numbers that I see. I don't know the names because there's no name with the phone numbers. Well, welcome everybody. This is your host, Anton Seals, Elder Seals, and our special guest. We're going to turn it over to Evangelist Deloney. Go right ahead. And her text tonight is coming. If you have your Bibles, get it open. It's John 14, unless the Holy Ghost gives us something different. Uh, John 14, 12 through 14, and Hebrews 2 through 4. Hebrews 2 through 4, and the miracles, topics, miracles, signs, and wonders, and she's a walking miracle. Amen. <laughs> Praise God, everybody, and welcome. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise the Lord, everybody that's on the line near and far. I thank and praise the Lord for the invite by this wonderful man of God. Hallelujah. I've been knowing him quite a while, and I thank God for that. I thank God for my pastor, Pastor Andrew D. Singleton Jr. Hallelujah. A man of integrity that I respect highly. Hallelujah. Most of all, I thank God, who is not just the head of my life. He is my life. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. And it gives me great pleasure tonight to share the word of God with everybody. I pray that something will be said that will set your soul on fire for 2022. And if you have your Bibles, we'll go right to the scripture. The first scripture I want to read is St. John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. And it reads, very truly, I tell you, all very truly, I tell you, you all who have faith in me will do the works that I have been doing, and they will even do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. And we run over to Hebrews, the second chapter. Uh, I'll be reading verses one through four, uh, verse four being our main uh, key scripture. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. Verse four, our key verse, God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. And the Holy Writ is already blessed, saints of God. And the Lord has given me instructions. He said, after I share the word, then I'm to give a testimony 
of being miraculously healed of COVID without yes. the doctors understanding why. Mm. Amen. So mm -hmm. on tonight, we're talking about miracle signs and wonders. So we might say, what are miracles? Are there, are they no more than uh, unusual occurrences that can be explained away by natural reasoning? Do they actually happen? Are, are they the uh, creation of wishful thinking? But I'm here to tell you, miracle saints do occur. They are so prominently displayed throughout the pages of the Bible that at times they may almost seem commonplace. As we look in the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 11, we see that it's recorded and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. The early church, it appears, was so empowered by God that certain supernatural events happened on a fairly regular basis. We humans are limited or bound by the natural laws, but God is not so limited. We are controlled by the laws of the universe. But the Almighty in his sovereign power may choose to transcend or even suspend these laws for his own purposes. When he chooses to work supernaturally and perform an act beyond the bounds of nature, we call it a miracle. In other words, saints of God, it cannot be explained. Oh, how we need a renewed demonstration of God's power. The skeptical generation in which we live nowadays, hallelujah to God, they don't have a clue. They don't have a clue. Miracles of uh, many times, uh, they see little or nothing of a real miracle and too much of cheap imitations. I'll say that again. They very rarely see a real miracle, but they witness a lot of cheap imitations. Mm -hmm. Miracle signs and wonders are all about faith, power, and authority. You can have all the power and all the authority that you want, but without faith to kick it into action, Hmm. nothing is going to happen. I'll give you a little example. Say, for instance, you have a police officer. The officer has a badge, which is his, gives him authority. He has a gun, which gives him power. But if he doesn't have the faith to, be, to pull that gun out to stop a criminal, he's just a man with a badge and a gun. So that's what we liken it to. Now, a miracle is an event that appears unexplainable, saints, by the natural laws of nature. In other words, it is the intervention of God to perform the humanly impossible. A sign gave credibility to the fact that what is being done is from God. A wonder means that what was done is amazing or marvelous. By its very nature, a wonder caused awe in all those that saw it or heard it. In other words, it was something wonderful. Jesus performed many signs, miracles, and wonders during his three and a half years of ministry here on this earth. And he promised that these same signs of healing and miracle saints of God would follow the true believer. I know you all believe that. We see in John, the third chapter, even Nicodemus, who was the ruler of the Jews, came out at night to see Jesus and said, Rabbi, in other words, master, we know that you're a teacher that came from God, for no man can do these miracles except God be with him. 
Hallelujah. Even Nicodemus recognized that. And guess what? Evidently, he had been watching Jesus. People are watching us, saints. That's why it pays to live every day as if Jesus is coming back. Because people are watching us to see if we're the real deal. See, here's the key. When Nicodemus said, except God be with us. See, we've got to have an Abba Father relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. In other words, I call it a daddy relationship. <laughs> We've got to be in the face of God so much until we can come to the Lord and just say, daddy, it's me. Hallelujah. Because it says in John 15, chapter verse five, that Jesus is the vine and we're the branches. And we've got to abide in him because without him, we can do nothing. We're just the vessel or the conduit that God uses. We can know that our natural children so well until if they knock on our door and we say, well, who is it? And they'll say, it's me. We're so close to them and recognize them and have such a, a relationship with them until we know their voice. Hallelujah, God. So when we tell God, it's me again, Lord, we don't have to say it's Ardelia or it's Elder Anton or it's anybody else on this line. Hallelujah. We just say, Lord, it's me again. Hallelujah to Jesus. Yeah. The ministry and teaching of Jesus Christ not only consisted of the things that he did, but the things that he said. The word of Christ and his manifested power are so inseparably entwined, you can't have one without the other. I'll say that again. The words of Christ and his manifested power are inseparably intertwined. You can't have one without the other. And I'll give you an example in John 18, uh, verse 6, when the soldiers of uh, Judas had betrayed Jesus and the soldiers came to the Garden of Gethsemane and they were... Um, uh, uh, asking for Jesus of Nazareth. And the Bible tells us that when he spoke and he said, I am he, his words and his power was so powerful until they fell backwards and fell to the ground. But I like to look at the key thing Jesus said, I am, hallelujah, I am. See, it's the I am that gets the job done. Hallelujah to God. In other words, they asked him again. He said, why you keep asking me? I said, I am he. <laughs> glory be to Yay, God. Glory. <laughs> Yay, glory. Jesus responded to the needs of others with the power to make a difference, saints. And I tell you, people of God, that same power through the Holy Ghost we have. The focus of the mighty acts was not to draw attention to Jesus himself, but in every situation, it was yes, his yes. unselfish love for those who were in desperate need. All right, all right, all right. The same love moved the Savior to heal the sick and set free those that were bound. Whenever the faith of those in need would reach out and access, in other words, tap into the power of the healer, guess what, saying? Miracles happen. We'll take this example of the lady, hallelujah, with the issue of blood. Hallelujah to God. She tapped to, into it by faith. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Now, remember this, saints, if you read the story, she could not reveal who she was. Why? Because the law said she was unclean. Now, she had had this issue for 12 long years, the Bible said. 
And so if she tried to go among people, even her family and touch them, it was seen as a serious crime. Anything and anyone she touched would become unclean. So she's taking a big risk here in the belief that there is healing in the hem of the garment of Jesus. But what did she know that gave her such assurance that if this is really the Messiah, that she would receive healing by touching his garment? But listen to this, saints, uh, according to the prophecy in Mal Malachi chapter 4, verse 2, uh, it says, uh, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Uh, the word wings here is used in the same word borders. Uh, that's B-O-R-D-O-R-S. Now, when uh, 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 God gave the order uh, for the Jews uh, to wear this garment with these tassels, uh, first it was the four corners uh, that they had to be on. Uh, then later on, uh, they changed it to be round, uh, like a circle. Uh, so this borders here is seen in Numbers 15, verse 38. So the woman knew that this, if this is the Messiah, then surely if I can just get close enough to touch the hem or the borders of his garment, I can, yeah. show, glory. Right. I can yeah. surely yeah. receive my healing. She was embracing the promise. Yeah. See, some yeah. of us that are embrace the promises of God, don't just read it, don't just talk about it, but believe uh, it uh, and embrace it. She was embracing the promise that the Messiah had healing in his wings, saints. Yeah. She looked yeah. upon Jesus and believed Believe that he was who he claimed to be. When she Hallelujah. touched that hem of that garment, it was the same as touching Jesus. She yeah. looked to yeah. him by faith. And when yeah. her faith touched Jesus' grace, hallelujah, glory to God, glory. she was glory. healed. Glory. You got to get that faith to touch the grace of God. She came to the right person in the right manner and received what she needed. Now, this is the great faith that she put in the scripture. Remember, yeah. I said she must have heard about Malachi 4 and 2. So she put her faith in that scripture as well as having enough faith to trust God. Hallelujah to Jesus. So Jesus responds by saying, your faith has made you whole. Hallelujah yeah, to God. Yeah. Your faith has made you whole. So as we go on, people of God, Jesus has given us. Guess what he's given us? He's given us POA. What is POA evangelist? Power of attorney to use his name. In other words, we act as his agent. Hallelujah. Most times when someone is given power of attorney for another, it's because that person is unable to do what they need to do to handle their affairs. But this was not the case with Jesus. Hallelujah. In John 14 and 12, it says, very truly, I tell you, all who have faith in me will do the works that I've been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I'm going to the Father. Without yes. a doubt, the works of Jesus' followers would be greater in extent. In other words, Jesus' earthly ministry had been largely limited in Galilee and Judea, which were provinces of Palestine. That was another, the third one, it was three of them that were in the province of Palestine, and that was Galilee, Judea, and Samaria. 
but his ministry was largely limited to Galilee and Judea. His di disciples, however, were going to extend his ministry to the uttermost parts of the earth. Hallelujah. When Jesus ascended into heaven, his followers numbered in the hundreds. But 40 days later, in response to the preaching of the apostles, that number leaped into the thousands. Acts 2 and 41 bears a witness. And by the end of Acts, the gospel had made its way all the way to Rome. Hallelujah. So they Hallelujah. were doing greater works. Hallelujah. Jesus did everything, saints, that he, a glory, was sent to do. Through, that through him, mankind would would believe and be saved. He also knew that the time would come that he would have to leave this earth. That's why he said on Golgotha's cross, it is finished. He passed that power of attorney down to every spirit-filled believer. He gave us the power to use his name, to cast out demons, to lay hands on the sick, to call those things that be not as though they are. He gave a Asha. He gave us power to bind and loose on earth, and they would be bound and loosed in heaven. Hallelujah to God, who would serve a God like that. He gave us this treasure in these old earthen vessels. The Bible says that at Calvary, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was unrecognizable. He was pierced in his side, blood streamed down, humiliated and persecuted. Herein, saints, is another miracle. Our yeah. Savior was buying back what he already owned. Saints of God, he paid a price that was too high for us to sit around just looking for miracles. If you want to see a miracle, I tell you today, look in the mirror. It's only one of you. God didn't make us clones. We're all his original design. Oh, bless his name. Mm, the miracles of Christ gave a powerful confirmation to his supernatural yeah. mission. Yeah. And that mission was to draw mankind back to himself. Even the birth of Jesus was a miracle. How is that, evangelist? Well, <laughs> the miracle of Jesus had been foretold by the prophets of old, but yet he refused to use his power and authority to relieve his own discomfort in the wilderness or on Galgotha's hill. And neither would he put on display, saints, his power to those who were merely seeking a sign. Bless the name of Jesus. And you know what? It hasn't changed today. Many times when word gets around and noise abroad about a certain healer or prophet coming to your town, Many only come who really only come on the CME. Oh, Jesus, Christmas, Easter, and Mother's Day. But when they hear this noise abroad, they make a stampede to the church house. But guess what? Everybody not coming for the right reason. Some come seeking and hoping. I'll get a word on how many cars I get, on how many houses I get, on how how much land I'm going to have, but not yeah, be yeah. delivered and set free. Some come even to see, saints of God, is the minister, all of that. I call that a prove it to me attitude. Prove to me that you are what you say you are. Oh, bless your name. I want to let you know right now, saints, God's miracles are free, but the devil's folks charge a fee. God's yeah. miracles are free, but the devil folks charge a fee. Put your money in this prayer 
Shalat, and I give you a reading right now. Divination devil, I rebuke you right now. Yes, yes, hey, glory, glory. He teach us when God performs a miracle, who does it out of love and compassion? Who teaches us not for profit or gain? Mm, you don't have to send me no money, and I'll send you some water to drink. You don't have to send me no money, and I'll send you this special prayer cloth. The Lord said to humble yourself and come to me. I will hear you, and I will answer you. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Mm, the Bible tells us all God's asking us to do you all is just to believe. Hallelujah. In the Bible, in Mark chapter 9 verse 23 he said to him that believeth all things are possible it's possible saints to have a peace of mind in a raggedy situation it's possible saints, to have hallelujah joy unspeakable if your health is failing it's possible saints to be healed of all manner of diseases i don't care if there's an alcoholic or drug addict or unsafe family member, they can be delivered and set free because yes, all yes. things are possible with our God. Mm, glory to God. But in order to believe, we must have faith. The day that we were born, the Bible said we were all given a measure of faith. I'm talking about the mustard seed kind. Guess what, saints? It was in our genes. It was in our DNA. In other words, uh, in our DNA. You know what that means? Do not accept. Do not accept the lies of the devil. Hallelujah. Faith gets God's attention every time, and Satan can't touch that. Hallelujah. You know what, saints? Faith has a track record. My God from Zion. Faith caused the walls of Jericho to come down. Hallelujah. Faith saved Daniel in the lion's den. Faith brought Goliath down with one smooth stone. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out the fiery furnace smelling like flowers. Blind Bartimaeus ignored the naysayers and gained his sight. We already talked about the woman with the issue of blood. And then there were the lepers that were healed and told, don't tell nobody. But guess what? They had faith that Jesus could heal them. They just couldn't keep it to themselves. When God does something for us saints, we got to tell somebody. We shouldn't keep it to ourselves. Faith caused the man at the temple gate to jump to his feet and run to the house of God worshiping. We're talking about faith here, saints. <clears throat> faith is your ticket to a miracle. Some say if God doesn't do it, it's not because he can't. But I like to say he's doing it when it doesn't even look like he is. And I can back that up in Romans 8, 28. It says all things, hallelujah to God, are working together to the good of those who love God and according, called according to his purpose. It may not feel good. It may not look good. It may get worse before it get better. But Ecclesiastes said, better is the end of a thing than the beginning. You know, God will not do for us saints uh, what we can do for ourselves. Uh, when we look in Acts, the 12th chapter, uh, verses 5 through 17, uh, we see where Peter, our brother Peter, was arrested by Herod Agrippa and imprisoned for several days. Uh, Pete, prayer calls God uh, to dispatch an angel to him, and miraculously, his chains fell off. There was two soldiers on one, one soldier on one side and one on the left. 
Then the angel led him out of prison through the, the iron gates uh, that were locked. Uh, when the angel began to walk him toward the gates, uh, the gates miraculously just flew open without a key. Oh, glory to God. Uh, and that's where the angel left him. So he had to find his way from there. You know, God has given us the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah. We're living beneath our privilege, men of us. He said that life and death are in our tongues, saints. We can put the enemy on the run. People say, put the devil under your feet. I beg to differ. The Bible never said, put the devil under your feet. Jesus cast the devil out. So if we're followers of Jesus, then we must cast the devil out. What I'm saying, saints, is that once the Lord has spoken a rhema word to you. And a rhema word is a personal word that God himself speaks to you. Whether it's from reading the word, hallelujah, or he sends somebody, or he speaks to you directly in your spirit, hallelujah. A word of deliverance, it's up to us to have faith and grab a hold to that word and act upon it. Sometimes our deliverance happens right away, and then sometimes it happens along the way. But we should still give God the glory. Now, miracles are not performed based on how much education we have or how excellent of speech we are, but it's based on the demonstration and the power of the Holy Ghost. So, what is the purpose of miracles evangelist huh? the purpose of miracles saints of god is to meet the needs of the people meet the needs of their circumstances and miracles attract attention to jesus when people get in touch with jesus expect something to happen he is touched by the feelings of our infirmities if we study the miracles of Jesus, saints, we must also study Jesus himself because he also is a miracle through the incarnation. He's the greatest miracle of all. I don't know of any other female, I don't care if they're living or dead or how holy they were, who was impregnated by the Holy Ghost. God created the womb in a woman, and then he came through the very room, hey, glory, that he created. Hallelujah to God. Now, that's some kind of miracle. When we make a request before the Lord, saints, we must come, hallelujah, with expectation. Expectation, knowing that our victory over the enemy was sealed before the foundation of the world. We've got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we don't have to depend on anybody to validate our credentials because they were validated at the foot of the cross. I hear the Lord say it, expectation. Let us go into 2022 with expectation, not a list of stuff for the Lord to do, hallelujah. But whatever he does, we're expecting it to be for our good. It's not about us, saints. God first chose us, filled us with his precious Holy Ghost for a reason. We're not just a channel through which God works, but we're a transformed part of his eternal purpose to make us like his son for his glory. The apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verses one through two, be ye followers, dear children. In other words, copy Jesus and follow his example. The Lord desires his church to not only see a revelation of his glory, but, he, but also to be a revelation of his glory. Hallelujah. 
He works in us to transform us into people who will exhibit his nature on this earth right here and give the world a glimpse of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, when Moses sent out the 12 men to spout the land of Canaan, 10 came back with a fear and doubt report, but Joshua and Caleb came back with a weak hand report. The Bible asks a question tonight, saints, whose report will you believe tonight? Will you believe the report of the Lord that says we're healed, we're delivered, and we're set free? You don't have to accept what the devil says about your situation. In the 21st century that we're living in today, it should be a natural thing, saints, for us to see the dead be made alive, cancers dried up, tumors falling off, blind eyes open, and deaf ears coming unstopped. It's an honor, saints, when God uses us. Hallelujah. But guess what? He's looking for holy, consecrated vessels. He's looking for someone to be willing to pray the price for the anointing that he puts on our life. He's looking for someone that got some battle scars. I said, God is looking for someone with some battle scars. Hallelujah, God. And you know what, saying scars are a reminder. We have, some of us have scars we've had ever since we were children. Whenever we look at that scar, we can name how we got that scar. Oh, bless his name. Saints of God, the time is far spent. And Jesus is surely coming back for his people. He has empowered us to lay hands on the sick, to cast out devils, to encourage people, to pray for people, believing that he himself will back us up. The word of God says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The woman with the issue of blood believed the word in Malachi, hallelujah. And she put faith on it. We have got to believe the word and act on it. There, as in my closing saints, there are 82 miracles in the Old Testament from Genesis to Daniel and 122 in the New Testament from John to Revelation. It also says in Exodus 7, verses 8 through 12, that the enemy works miracles too. I draw your attention Back to the book of Exodus, when Aaron and Moses were before Pharaoh, telling him that God, the I am said, let my people go. And he began to say, mm, do you have a miracle? And God mm, informed Aaron to throw his staff down. And I'm sure you all are familiar with that. Glory be to God. When Aaron threw that staff down, it turned into a snake. And then Pharaoh had two magicians throw their staffs down. Hallelujah. And there were two more snakes. But I tell you, if you believe the Bible, Aaron's staff that turned into a snake ate up the two magician's stake. Hallelujah. God will overpower the enemy every single time. The Holy Ghost is more powerful than any demonic force on this yes. earth. Thank you, Jesus. Today, the body of Christ has been saturated, saints, with the supernatural. We have been empowered mm. to be a witness to all the world. And included in that commission is the miraculous power of Christ at work in every believer. 
A believer is never meant to follow after a sign, but the signs are supposed to follow the believer. When the word of God is preached with power and authority of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus, saints, miracles will follow. Devils tremble at the name of Jesus. Chains come off at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It is our power of attorney. And we are fully authorized to use the name of Jesus in each and every situation. When the Lord saved us and filled us with his Holy Spirit, that in itself was a miracle. And I tell you today, all those that are on this line, if you are believing God for a miracle, whatever it may be, don't give up. Don't lose heart because our God is still in the miracle working business. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, glory. Jesus. I'm going to ask everybody, take, your, take your phones and your computers off mute. You can unmute yourselves. It's set for you to give. Just give a word of praise yes. and thanksgiving right yes. now. In the Hallelujah. name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I praise your holy name. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to take the privilege opportunity um, and, 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 and thanking God for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, and, 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 and thanking God for you. But while we're in this spirit of praise and thanksgiving for Thank such you. a powerful, powerful message, yeah. there's not a soul on this line that cannot relate to the miracle working power mm -hmm. that we have all experienced at some stage yeah. of our lives when we accept Jesus Christ. Yes. And even to bring to you in the midnight hours to remember where he brought you from. Yes. yes. Oh, glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Would you share your miracle that you opened us up with? And, uh, if you're moving around, Xavier, put your, put your phone on mute. Uh, we can hear you moving around. And please stay with us, but put it on mute. I see you walking, and, and we just want you to stay with us, Minister Xavier. Um, but praise God for such a powerful message. It brings tears. Yeah. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Not yes. tears of sadness, but tears of joy because we've been there. Yes. And we're still experiencing the miracle working power. Yes. This podcast is a miracle working yes. power to have week after week so many wonderful people would you please mm. share your testimony because you said anton you wanted to mm. make sure that people knew and you and i want to quote what you said when the holy ghost the power of god is moving because you have such expectation you, when you were in a place that that god could have called you home it turned things around and and, and the doctors could not explain why are you still here? Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I've given bits and pieces of my testimony. Some of you have heard bits and pieces, but I'm going to tell the whole thing. Um, uh, I asked the Lord earlier this year, what was my assignment? Because I didn't feel like I had any strength, anything um, or anything like that. And he never said anything. And then 
He told, he told me, wherever you go, I want you to give this testimony. He said, to those that need to hear it, I'll have them start talking about COVID. And when they do, that's your door. And I thank God for this platform that so many people can hear and believe that God is still doing real, true miracles. So on March 23rd, 2020 of last year, I was uh, suffering with symptom, asthmatic symptoms. And my husband was suffering. He thought he had the flu. And uh, the 23rd was my eldest son's birthday, but <clears throat> I was just gonna wish him a happy birthday and whatever. But when I uh, woke up on the 22nd, I had a temperature and my husband was coughing. So I called my daughter, Evangelist Terry, and I said, I need you to uh, take us to the hospital, to the ER. So my husband, he, he just didn't wanna go. He said, I'm just going uh, to be with you because we were inseparable. And so what happened, um, she prayed all the way there. She put her music on because he was just so adamant that he was not going to get checked out. So anyhow, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we got there. When we got there, now mind you, this is the, the hype, the beginning of the COVID. No vaccine, no cure. They didn't know what to do for you. I was on prednisone for the asthma, but it wasn't working. So it, my husband was on antibiotics from his doctor and that wasn't working. So when we got to the, to the Franciscan uh, emergency, my husband got out of the car, got a wheelchair, cause I was coughing my guts out by then, put me in the wheelchair and began to roll me in, but they stopped him and my daughter. And they said, unless you're being checked out, you can't go in. So because he didn't want to leave me, he said, I want to get checked out. Well, uh, they took us in separately because I have a history of athea, even though the doctors can't find nothing acting up now. But anywho, because that, because that was on my, on my record, they immediately took me right in. And um, I don't remember them telling me that I had COVID. My daughter said that I, I called her and I told her that's what they said, but I don't remember that. So... Um, the second day, I remember that first day I kept asking for my husband and they wouldn't tell me. And I said, well, I'm going to sign myself out. And they said, well, if you sign yourself out, you're going to be responsible for this whole bill. So I said, OK, I'll stay. But then I started um, throwing up. So I got into bed and, and that was the first day. The second day, I, I didn't recall this until later because COVID messes with your mind. And so um, only because they keep you so sedated, but I didn't find out later that I asked my daughter, I said, what did the doctors tell you as far as sedating me? She said, mama, they always told me you were lightly sedated because I couldn't figure out if I was deeply sedated, how I could recall some things, you know? So anyhow, um, long story short, um, the second day I was there, I actually spoke to my husband, which I didn't remember until way after I got home. And he said, they're going to send me home with an inhaler. And I said, why? And he said, I don't know, but he sounded real congested. So after that, I don't remember anything else. I don't know how many days had passed, but I remember a nurse and a doctor came in and the nurse was trying to put a CPAP over my nose, over my face. And because I have aversion to things on my face, like I'm going to be smothered, I remember hitting her hand away. And I heard the doctor say, never mind, I'm going to do this. And I heard him say, uh, I'm going to put something in your mouth down your throat. It's going to hurt a little, but it'll be okay. Well, later I found out that when he shoved that ventilator down my throat, um, and I found this out through a throat specialist because I couldn't uh, only whisper for a month and a half I got out the hospital. He knocked my voice box off balance. And the specialist said it could not be corrected. And my voice was real hoarse, almost like a man's voice. Hallelujah. As you all can hear, I sound like a female. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So <laughs> I remember being on that 
a ventilator. And I could, I was right across from the nurse's station and I could see the nurses and I would be so sleepy. Then I'd wake up and they would come in and out and take vitals. And one day this nurse came in, Caucasian nurse. Well, she identified herself as nurse. She said, my name is Katie and I'm gonna take your vitals. But she never took my vitals. And I was just laying up there looking and with the ventilator. And every time she would take my hand, she kept taking my hand. Her hand was real warm. Like I'd never wanted to let her hand go. And um, so she was just talking to me real calmly and calming me. And my they had my hands tied to the rail. And I kept trying to move my hands. And she said, your hands are tied to the rail. And I kept looking at her like I wanted to say, please loose me. But she knew what I wanted. I couldn't talk with that ventilator in my mouth. She said, if I promise to untie your hands, will you promise not to pull that out of you? And I did my head like this. And she untied me. And I put my hands under the cover. And so she said, I kept doing like this, you know, like I, I wanted to call, like call somebody. I didn't know who or what, but my hand. And she said, um, do you have a phone? And I pointed like to the coat class. I don't even see how I did all this stuff because I couldn't talk. And I was just dazed and stuff. And uh, she went to the coat closet. She got my purse and she looked in my purse and she saw my phone. And she said, who do you want me to call? And I didn't know nothing. I couldn't say nothing. I didn't have no clue who to call. I didn't know nothing about my family or nothing. So she said, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to let you write it down. So she got a piece of paper and she said, write it down. I took the pencil and it was scribble all over the paper. Like you would give a, a one or two year old a pen or a pencil and stuff. It was just scritch, scribble lines. And so she, she, we used up so much paper. Now, mind you, it was overcrowded in that hospital. There was a shortage of nurses. They would come in and go out like quick, fast. No one ever came looking for this nurse named Katie. She came to my room two and a half days straight. She stayed as long as she wanted to. Nobody ever came and got her out. We used, we used so much paper to there. She couldn't find no paper. She looked on the wall. There was a calendar. She snatched it off the wall and she turned it over and she wrote the alphabet. And I looked at the alphabet. I didn't know what it was. She said, uh, pick out the letters of who you want me to call. And I couldn't because I didn't know what the letters meant. It was like a foreign language. So she got my phone and she just started going through my phone. Then she found my list. So she, she, she would find something and I would just look at her. And then she, now I don't know how this happened, but she got to my son's name and I did like that. And she called my son, but he didn't answer his phone. She kept going and she, she saw Terry's name. And for whatever reason, I knew Terry. So I hit that and she called Terry. And she said, this is Katie. Terry's a witness, your mother's nurse. And she said, she can't talk, but she wanted me to call you. And my daughter started crying and everything. She was called just mommy, 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 mommy. And so after that happened, she said, I'm going to have to leave. And I remember grab, she grabbed my hand and I, I could feel the tears dripping. Her hand was so hot. It was like, I don't know, I can't explain it. But she finally left. 
And I don't know how many days passed after that. But when she had gave me my purse, she put my purse under the cover. Well, mind you, it was hidden real well because I was in that hospital 18 days. Not once did they bathe me, not once did they wash my face, not once did they um, brush my teeth, not once, not once. Um, I was in there, my lips were so parched, they would come in with a gigantic, um, uh, like a um, Q-tip, they had a sponge, they would pour water in a cup and wet my lips. One day a male nurse came in and I pointed like this and he picked up the, the, the long stick, dipped it in the water, dropped it on the floor, picked it off the floor and put it on my mouth. And I just shut my eyes real tight. So I don't know how many days passed after that because out of those 18 days, I can only remember maybe about, maybe, maybe eight days, maybe. Um, the next thing I remember, because people were afraid of us. They had all the COVID patients on one side, you know. And um, my daughter-in-law was in there, my husband was in there, I was in there. My youngest son was in Christ with a, with a master stroke. So four people were in there and all of that was on my, my daughter. So after so many days, two, two nurses came in that I never saw before. I don't know if one was a nurse's aide or if one, uh, or if she was a nurse, but it, they were African-American and, and the younger one was Hispanic. They all, all the nurses and doctors prior to that had on the regular mask and the clear face shield. This African-American nurse came in. She never identified herself. She had a mask on her face that was similar to a deep sea diver. It was like all rubber, brown rubber. I only saw her eyes. She came in the room in a hurry. And she told the younger, uh, uh, I'll say nurse, I was across from the nurse's station. So they had um, a clear sliding door. Then they had an inner room where they had the computer. Then they had two more sliding doors. She told the younger nurse, she said, close all those, uh, pull all those curtains. I don't want anybody looking in here. And she, she said, Mrs. Deloney, she said, I'm going to give you a light sponge bath and I'm going to take this ventilator out of your throat. So as I look back later, I was like, okay, the doctor put it in. Why was a, a nurse taking it out? So she asked me if I could grab a hold to the rail and turn my body. It was hard, but I did. And she, she, she had some warm steam towels. And when she put that on my body, it felt like I was revived. She took that, she said, I'm gonna pull this ventilator out and it's gonna be a lot of stuff come out. Don't worry, I'm gonna clean you up. She told the little girl, she said, we gotta work fast. She looked at me, she stared at me and she said, I've got to get this prayer warrior out of here. And I looked, hey, glory. Mm. I looked at her. And I'm like, you know, to my, in my mind, I'm thinking you, I don't know you, you don't know I'm a prayer warrior. And so she just kept telling the younger person to hurry, 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 hurry. She said, get the oxygen and put it at the foot of her bed. And she said, when we pull these doors open, we're going to speed out of here and speed down this hall. And so <laughs> the younger person said, well, what if somebody says something? She said, nobody is going to say anything. I remember they opened them curtains, they opened them doors, they pushed me out of there. They were speeding down that hall. I looked around, everybody was minding their own business. The people at the nurse's station never turned around. The people that were walking down the hall, they never looked around. They passed right by me. They and we were moving. 
So they put me in a, a room by myself. And so I kept asking the other nurses, I said, where's Katie? I said, why didn't Katie come back to take care of me? And they said, Katie who? But I was whispering. And so they, they, were, they were trying to hear me and I tried to describe, they said, first of all, we don't have a Katie working on this, you know, here at all. There's no Katie in this COVID section. So I said, okay. So while I was in this other room, I found out that this lady, that's this, this angel that said I was a prayer warrior. Um, while, before she came back, she came back. Um, I was hospitalized on my 75th birthday last year. So I was supposed to go home on April the 10th. My birthday was April 9th. But before, before that, while I was in there on that ventilator, my, my, my god granddaughter, Takara Singleton, she came up there and she, she wrote scriptures all on the glass. She, she said, Mother, I'm writing all these scriptures on the glass. The church is praying for you. And, and I couldn't even read the scriptures. I only knew they were scriptures because she told me. So anyway, nobody never wiped the window and wiped them off. But anyway, um, while I was in that room, after they took that, that ventilator out, the Lord told me, he said, I need for you to start wiggling your ankles and your feet, but never let the doctors and nurses see that. And so I would do it. I didn't understand why. And about, um, I'll guess it was maybe about a week before they let me out. I, as well as my, my, some of my family are prophetic dreamers. I had a dream that I, I, my husband and I used to ride horses. I had a dream that I had went to this ranch, uh, say like in Colorado, it was hot and it was sunny and it was huge mountains mountains in the distance, but it was only one stucco mansion. And I saw the father sitting on the porch and the son standing on the steps. They were Hispanic. And the son says to me, you see that horse over there? That was a beautiful uh, pale yellow horse with a uh, hair uh, mane so long it hung all the way down past his body. His, his, and it was like a golden blonde. He said, if you can ride that horse to that mountain and back in 27 minutes, you're going to make it. And the next thing I knew, it seemed like the horse knew what to do. I jumped on the horse. He flew to the mountain, touched the ground with his, with his nose, whirled around and came back. And, and the son said, you made it in 27 minutes. I had that dream twice. Then I started having uh, another dream of a kaleidoscope of doors. They were, they were um, uh, neon, yellows, oranges, pinks, greens. They were just folding in and out like they were waving in the wind. And I had that dream once. And while I was laying there, I, I had fallen into a sleep and I heard this subtle voice say, you've done all you can. You've raised your family. Just go on to sleep. You're already sleepy. Just sink on in, just give it, give in and give up. And I felt myself listening to that voice and I could feel myself just sinking away. And at the very next instant, I heard a loud voice say, no. And the voice was so loud, it drowned out that subtle voice and seemed like I felt life come back into me. But the last thing was on the day of my birthday, the day before I was released, this same angel, I call her angel because that's what she was, came in my room and she came in there like at 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning when it was dark outside. I mean, was no sound in the hallway, no other nurses, nobody. It was, and I knew it was dark because it was a window in my room. And um, she, she said she was going to do my vitals, but she just came and like touched my arm and went over to the desk. And she said, um, 
here's your breakfast. My mother prepared your birthday breakfast. Now, mind you, all the nurses would tie our breakfast, our food up in a plastic bag and throw it on the table. They wouldn't feed us. They wouldn't untie it. They wouldn't take it out. And when I did could get somebody to open it, I couldn't eat it because of being diabetic. It had been sitting on the tray so on the wagon so long until the eggs were were sitting in cold grease and all the things I couldn't eat. I lost 37 pounds in 18 days from not only thing I was able to eat, Takara brought me some chicken broth that another one of my friends had made. And I was able to sip on that. So she brought this food and it was stuff I could eat. So she left out and the 10th, the day that I was to come home, she came back and I said, why you keep coming so early in my room? No nurses are around, nobody. And she just looked at me and I said, tell your mom, I said, thanks for the breakfast. And she looked at me, she said, my mother didn't fix that breakfast. I said, I thought you told me your mother. She was like, my mother didn't fix that breakfast. And she said, bye, Mrs. Deloney. She was the only person in the whole place called me Mrs. Deloney. And, and uh, when I was in there, they kept taking x-rays like every hour, the last few days, every hour, every hour. I was like, why are they taking so many x-rays? Well, when I... They were so astounded, they could not figure out. They said, we have never had anyone with all pre-existing conditions that you have, 75 years of age, to walk out of here from having COVID. So I didn't pay it any attention. I had three doctors, two signed out for me to come home one didn't want to without oxygen. He said she needed at least one liter of oxygen. I came home with a liter of oxygen and I was on a walker and I was going to sleep. The Lord said, you don't need oxygen. I was going to sleep and the oxygen was falling out on the floor and I didn't even know it. My, my family was telling me, you don't even use that oxygen. But what happened, I got my hospital medical records and I looked at those records and it says that I had been diagnosed with bilateral pneumonia, pneumonia in both lungs, SARS, COVID-19. Um, they said on the record, it said um, one night they came to check me, my blood, my, my, my kidneys were starting to uh, go down. My oxygen level was going down. Glory be to, hey! The next morning when they came in, they could not find a trace of COVID nowhere in my body. My kidneys were functioning, my lungs were functioning, my heart was functioning. They couldn't figure it out. Now I know why they were taking all those x-rays on me. And this past June, the heart specialist asked me, he said, did they ever show you your lungs when you had COVID? I said, no, they didn't. He said, I'm gonna show you your lungs from last fall. And I'm gonna show you your lungs when you had COVID. My lungs from last fall was clear as a button. My lungs, when I was in the hospital, my left lung was over. It, I saw all this fluffy white stuff. I said, what's all that fluffy white stuff in my lungs? He said, that's COVID. Three quarters of my left lung was full of COVID. It had started to accumulate in my right lung. But the next day after they, they, they said my oxygen and my kidneys were acting up the next morning, they couldn't find anything. My lungs were totally clear. All they gave, they could give me while I was there was to keep me on the prednisone and give me antibiotics. They had me on about 17 or 18 antibiotics, even my allergies. He said, my God, how in the world they gave you all these antibiotics and they didn't do anything. 
So I praise God today. I thank God for his healing. You know, many of us have testimonies, but when you have it in black and white and the doctors don't know what to do, and I just had a series of tests, all kinds of tests done on my body within the last uh, month or two, and every test came back clear. I shared with Elder Seals the other day how they were saying, they gave me all these eye drops for glaucoma, saying my eye pressure was too high. It was 21 in my left eye and 23 in the next. But I tell you, I made a connection of expectation with the healer of all healers. And I said, Daddy, I need for my eye pressure to go back to normal because I don't have glaucoma and this medicine is causing my allergies and my sinuses to act up. I went in there and he sat there and he said, your pressure in your left eye is 12 and the pressure in your right eye is 13. I'm telling you saints, grab a hold to God. I don't care what it looked like. I give God the glory and the praise. I have to make every day count. And as saints of God, I tell you this today. I don't care how sick you may be. I don't care when they count you out until your work is finished on this planet we call earth. We will not leave here. Right. Hallelujah. 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 And on that note, Hallelujah. I Amen. Take your phones off. Just say hallelujah. Amen. Take it off. Just say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My husband had no pre existing conditions. He's still working. I couldn't figure that out. Mm. My God, my God, my God. Months, I didn't want to talk to nobody. Mm. I didn't want no phone calls. I was just plain mean. My heart was broken. I didn't understand it. And God said, I want to heal your heart, but you got to give me permission. Saints, if you yeah, want yeah. to yeah, yeah. heal your heart, he wants you to give him permission. Why? Because we yeah. have a free will. And yeah. I was so tired of crying. My face my was so swollen. I mm. didn't care if I lived or died. And mm. one day I couldn't take it. And I said, mm -hmm. the Lord said, but if I heal your heart, you got to tell him goodbye. And I said, I can't yes. do it. And I screamed and hollered and ran and stomped and cried. I can't do it. And finally, I, I was tired of it, saints. Mm. And mm. I said, God, heal my heart. When yeah. the Lord healed my heart, saints, I have yeah. not been the same since. Hallelujah. I've been praising God. The yeah. Lord said, my husband is sleeping with Jesus. God and I have cool. a little, I told my kids, huh. I say, yeah, I miss Brother D. I say, but uh, I ain't trying to go see him no time too soon. <laughs> <laughs> I could wait till my point of You see him one day. Oh, oh no, you can't go see him right now. Right. No, no, no. Not right right now. Not right now. <laughs> Not now. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you, you know, all for oh, Mr. God. To my Praise God. I really love you all. Praise God. God. Yeah. Love you too. God you. bless you. God you bless you. Beautiful. Me. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God. I thank God. And I'm going to ask uh, some of you thank to you, start off with, with your daughter, Terry. Uh, if you don't mind, Terry, just, just praising God. And, and if you want to share any comments, please feel free. Um, and I want to definitely make sure we include uh, Mother Karine. Because <laughs> I, she's I, 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 you asked her to be on. So. I want to say to the people that are listening on Facebook and to all of you that are live and on your phones, please, when you get this video recording, would you please share this? And because this is not about um, anything else but letting people know the power of God. One of the great things that's missing in the world is we don't give God the, 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 the honor of adoration 
for all that he's doing. Oh, excuse no, me, not... Elder Sears. May I just say one thing? You know, I'm a researcher. I like to research stuff. So when I got out, I kept saying, Lord, what did those dreams mean? I know they meant something because they were, were prophetic. I kept looking at 27 minutes. The Lord said, no, it wasn't about the minutes. It was about my determination to ride that horse and get back because he said I would make it. I didn't understand what I would make it mean, but mean that I would be healed. And right. all those kaleidoscopes of all those colors, when I researched that, research that, it said that that showed, uh, when you see all of those colors, it, it, it uh, lets you know that angels are around. And I found out later, my daughter said she asked, the God, asked God to assign two angels to me. And that's exactly what he did. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. I'm, I'm Praise the Lord, to everybody. There you go. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Um, let me just say this. Um, God has assigned angels to me since I was a little girl. Um, God has tried to take me out six times, four of them through major car accidents. And at all times, he has told me he has assigned angels to watch over me. Um, and so because I know he has these angels with mom, dad, sister-in-law and brother all being in the hospital at the same time and everyone calling me because my brother and sister-in-law, that means their daughter, their oldest daughter, my niece was calling to pull on me because not only did she have her grandparents in there, she had her mother and father in the hospital. And so I became the, the conduit for the family. But I do want to say this. Um, I did have the opportunity to talk to my dad um, just before they had put him on the ventilator. And I called him and I talked to him. They called the phone and let me talk to him. And this is what he told me. And this is what I held, has held, held on and will hold on to until God see fit for us to re reunite again. He told me, God got me, God is in control, and I'm not worried. And so I had to hold on to that. If my daddy told me that God had him and that God was in control, and if you had ever had the opportunity to meet my father, you would have understood that he was a soft-spoken man, but he was a man full of wisdom. And when he dropped those nuggets, you listened <laughs> to what he had to say. <laughs> Amen. Um, I do have my own testimony, but I won't go into it. But I will say this, that having all of my family members in, God continued to take care of me. Amen. He continued to keep me. And that was totally a blessing because not only was all my parents and, and my brother and sister-in-law in, I was also teaching remotely. Um, I'm a school teacher for Chicago Public Schools. In addition to that, I'm a doctoral student. So I was working on my doctoral degree, but he kept me through it all. So now I'm at the point where I'm starting to write my dissertation. So y'all just pray for me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Terry. God bless you. Um, I, I don't I don't, and sometimes I just have to pause and behind such a powerful message and the powerful testimony uh, that, that is rooted in the prophetic word of God, that God, God is a healer and his spirit is a living spirit. Yes. Um, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Mother Curleen if you would uh, sh share a few words. And if I think um, Evangelist Doris, did you have your hand up earlier? Uh did, only by, only okay. by error, only by oh, error. I, I just wanted sorry. you to know that I, I did see it. I did see I, it. Thank you. Um, thank we, you. We want to, we don't want to belabor the evening, but this is such, and I told her before we got started, I felt this was going to be an unusual evening. Um, we started the year 2021 doing this podcast, the Tabernacle Fire in you, not knowing what direction God was going to take it. And 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 we started off with miracles. That's what he told me to talk about miracles, and we closed with miracles. Uh, Mother Curleen, Evangelist Curleen, uh, suggested to me certain people, and they've all been on, and it has been miraculous. And other people that I've never met, 
have been on this podcast. So I give God the glory. But I would like for you to share some comments. And if there are a few other people who like to, to make some, I do want um, uh, Evangelist uh, Deloney to close us out in prayer and open the doors. Because somebody in the, in the uh, listening audience on Facebook may not know Jesus. And I, there may be somebody on this line who hasn't accepted Jesus. I don't take anything for granted. So, and you can, you know, reach out to me or evangelist and we'll put you in touch with the church. Uh, but God bless you. Um, all of you. Thank you all so much. Um, Mother Curleen, evangelist, would you like to make some comments? And we've yeah. got one Thanks other Lord. Only, and that's Brother Clarence. So I'm going to ask him to make a comment. Yeah. Praise <laughs> the, the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, many of you don't know that the 10 a.m. prior was birthed primarily because of Mother Deloney. I remember calling her and I still have the text where she texted me and said, I'm going to the hospital. I've been thrown up all night. I still have the text. She doesn't remember sending me the text, but I still have it in my phone. And I remember her being in the hospital and I said, well, God, who the prior warrior is gone. Who is going to pray for all of these people? We're in the midst of COVID. Well, I'm just not happy about that right now. And I remember calling the hospital all the time and telling the nurse, please tell mama we're praying for her. Tell daddy Deloney that we're praying for, for them. And I remember the day she came home and Terry was there and I just sat in my car and I cried. I thank God every day that she's alive because when I first called her about the prior ministry with COVID, said, what about seven o'clock? And she said, no, seven o'clock is too early. I said, what about nine o'clock? She said, no. And that's when I went to 10 o'clock. Because of Mother Deloney, that 10 a.m. prior was birthed. She doesn't remember a lot of stuff. But even when we were praying all night for her, even when we were coming to the hospital and sitting in the parking lot, I'm just so grateful because I cannot imagine being around without Mom Deloney. God bless you. Thank you. I love you, Mom. I love you more. You know you in my heart, my heartbeat, girl. I birthed you out with, with Mother Wes. <laughs> uh, amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of this. Brother Clarence, Elder. Amen, amen. Praising that, Brother Anton. How you doing this evening? How's everybody? Just yes. pressing on, pressing on. Good. You know, and I, I tell you, you know, every time I, I see or uh, listen to uh, Evangelist Deloney, I just, it's like they just, I, I just go back to Brother Deloney, you know, and, right, and, right. and some of the things that we used to talk about and, and uh, what he told me he used to do, you know, while he was retired, he said he would get up in the morning, he'd look outside and, um, uh, and he decided then if he wanted to go to work or not. If he didn't, he would just close the curtain back and go back to bed, <laughs> you know. But um, but uh, anyway, uh, we used to have some, you know. They were short, you know, just like um, just like Terry said, you know, it might not be much, you know, but there was a lot in it, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I always enjoyed talking to him, and you know, and every time I see her, I think about him, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, I do have uh, just, you know, I remember. Um, just a, a miracle, just one of the miracles, one of many. Um, about 10 years ago, when I was at work, I don't know if you're familiar um, with that piece of artwork that's in front of the firehouse in Flossmoor. Anyway, if you ever go by there on Flossmoor Road, there's a piece of artwork that's in, the, in front of the firehouse. Anyway, that artwork fell on me and it weighs a ton. And it fell on my shoulders. And I tell you, and I was on a I zero, that. I was on a zero turn lawnmower. That thing fell on me. And I tell you, I, I, I felt my, my vertebrae, I felt it compressing. I knew another second, I knew my back was going to be broken. But for some reason, something threw me off that lawnmower onto the grass. And I ended up on all four 
and and something and i know it's the lord he just told me to be still and it was a uh a lady it was because it's a mailbox right there and she was mailing a letter and she ran over there because the artwork had fell on the lawnmower after the lord threw me off of it and it was still compressed on the seat thinking i'm still on it it's still full throttle and i'm not on it you know so she said what do, what do you want me to do how you turn this thing off you know so i just told her turn the key i said and i said go in the firehouse i said get the paramedics i said and go down to the retention i said that's my co-worker you know and go down there and let him know you know what happened but i just want to tell you you know that that's real it, that's a whole that was that thing weighs a ton and it wasn't secured you know it was secured the next day you know but it wasn't secured so I just want to let people know that just like evangelist said, God is real. He exists. He performs miracles. It was, it was, I didn't have to get any surgery, you know, on my back. It hasn't quite been the same, you know, but I didn't have to get any surgery uh, whatsoever. And, uh, and you, and that's true. When you come close to death, sometimes you do see a lot of your life flash before you. I thought that was it, you know, so I just want to give uh, God all the praise all the glory um i thank him for the holy spirit he could have left me out there but he didn't and i know i'm not by myself you know so um you know and it's all about god anyway you know and that's just the powerful mm -hmm. i know i've heard that testimony before evangelist but i you know it's just always it just always touches me and 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 you know how god just comes in and just takes care of us you know and when nobody else knows you know but we know you know mm -hmm. so Anyway, I, I thank you for that. I thank you for uh, your uh, your word and your testimony uh, this evening. God bless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank God. Thank mm -hmm. God. God bless you, Elder, um, our brother, Minister Xavier. I said we only had one man, or we have two. Uh, with Brother Xavier, I uh, want to just acknowledge him. He was walking around. I see him sitting now, but God bless you. He's been on for the whole time. Uh, all of you, thank you so, so very much for your being present. Um, I, it is, we've, we've been on for an hour and a half, and, and we've had 19, 20 people live with us. And so please share this. This is powerful testimonies. You know, the world doesn't acknowledge God, and God is calling the world back to him. And this is an opportunity. This, we're not a church. This is ministry outside the walls of the church that just is a platform giving God all the praise, honor, and glory. And so keep us AJS ministry in prayer. We're teaching praying ministry. And I thank God for the witnessing. I thank God for what God is doing uh, on this prayer line. I've had miracles that have kept me through so much. And some of you know my testimonies. It'll be mm. 42 years since I had lung surgery when I was 30 in 1981, February 1st, and I, February 2nd, 1981, to be 42 years, uh, my lungs collapsed from sarcoidosis, and I've never been sick again, and I know I saw the Spirit of the Holy Ghost when I had a relapse, and never been sick again, and, and God gave me the voice to sing, so I praise God that he'll use us, use all of you for his glory. Galaxy A50, I don't know you, but you're a beautiful woman of God. Thank you, too. Nona, thank you for being on. That's to my sister-in-law. She hey. another miracle. Hey, yes. hey, miracle. Yes. Hey, hey. Oh, hey. She's a miracle so maybe, in herself. Maybe we need to talk about getting some of these other people back on. Too. She's a miracle. She was in the hospital with COVID 53 days, and they gave her up to die. But she's walking around. Marcy Etta Deloney, she's on the line. Yes, yes. I got today. Okay, uh, what, we, what we may do is, if you all don't mind, um, let's talk about um, uh, Evangelist Deloney uh, having um, her, her on and other members, people, uh, to remind people of the hope of Jesus is still alive. Um, that's what this is all about. This is, and I have a cancellation for next week. Um, the 13th, I think, or the 6th. I have to look at the schedule. I'll let you know. Uh, but if you would like to get beyond with us to share your testimonies, um, let us know. Uh, we would be glad to have you. Uh, my good friend, Pastor uh, Julius Washington, keep him in prayer. 
He lost his cousin yesterday, and we want to keep him in prayer. He was supposed to be our guest next week or the 13th. But I'll let you know, uh, Evangelist Deloney, praise God for you. And we're going to close out with, with asking you to close out and, and even extend to those who may not know Jesus. I praise the Lord, Have Pastor Seal. Pastor Evangelist uh -huh. Harrison has been on during the whole time. That's the 663 number. So she's been on through the, through the whole time, Evangelist Harrison. Oh, hey. okay. God bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> she's our guest coming up. Yeah, she said hi. <laughs> hey, glory to God. Yeah, we just see her phone number. I didn't know that was her. That was, uh, but I want her. you to know that she will be our guest coming up. Uh, let's see, um, January the 20th, uh, we will have you as our guest, uh, Evangelist Harrison. So God bless you. God bless you. And peace and blessings to you. Did you want to make a comment before we close out? So we're going to go ahead and close out. And, and I would love to have uh, your sister-in-law, uh, Terry. Uh, to, to let's talk through your mom. Uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, how we could have a couple of other people have a testimony Thursday uh, for the first. Mm -hmm. I started I started 2021 on miracles and it ain't by accident that my good friend lost his his, his cousin. And now we need someone to get, come and give some more um, miracles of what God is able to do. So I'm going to reach out to you tomorrow. Um, uh, Mother uh, um, Ardelia, call you Mother now. <laughs> but Evangelist, I reach out to you and to uh, Kerlin and, and tie things together. I thank God for all of you. Thank you. Thank you. you know, yeah, I'm fighting back tears. Go ahead. Go ahead. Close this out. Thank you, Vanessa. Amen. Thank you, God. Let us look to, to the Lord with expectation. Hallelujah. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we come boldly before your throne of grace on this afternoon. Hallelujah. We're so grateful for Calvary, Lord, because it gave us the right, hallelujah, to go beyond the veil, oh God. And hallelujah, stand in your presence and bow in your presence and kneel in your presence, oh God. Father, we thank you for everything that our ears have heard on tonight. We thank you for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for salvation on tonight, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to continue to bless this ministry. Hallelujah. AJS ministry, Lord God. Lord, hallelujah. I hear you right now, Brother Anton. I hear the Lord saying, the hey, glory, the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. I ask you to work and move in each person's life that's on this line tonight, Lord, whatever the need be, Lord God. We know that you can handle it. Hallelujah. We know hallelujah that you're our daddy you're our Abba father Lord God father in the name of Jesus we have our faith and our confidence and our trust in you knowing that no thing is too hard for you Lord God father I come against every spirit of doubt and anxiousness right now and unbelief in the name of Jesus I come against worry right now and anxiety in the name of Jesus Satan you are a lion wonder I command you to take your hands off the people's mind right now in the name of Jesus, because they are blood bought and blood washed, and you can't cross that bloodline. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, I ask you to station their ministering angels around them to go where they go, hallelujah, to protect them, to keep them from hurt, harm, and danger in all their ways, dear God. Father, in the name of Jesus, even now, if there's anybody on this line that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, oh God, they don't know what peace and joy is in the Holy Ghost, Lord. Uh, they're trying to make a decision, dear God. Uh, Father, I ask you to teach them how to detach and attach, God, to detach from the cares of this world, oh God, uh, and attach themselves to you, uh, knowing that you're not a man that you should lie. If you Told them something, shall not you do it, oh God. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you praise. Uh, I bind every retaliating and backbiting spirit right now, every python spirit that will try to 
uh, squeeze the life out of the word that was delivered. You're a lying wonder. I lay the ax to the root of you right now in the name of Jesus and you uh -huh. will not flourish. God, we give you glory. We give you praise. We lift up your name, the name above every name. Hallelujah. We worship you. Hallelujah. We love you with an everlasting love. We give you glory. We praise you, Lord God, and we bow before you. Hallelujah. Help us to keep ourselves humble before you and all our ways. In Jesus' name, I declare and decree that it is so according to your holy word. In Jesus' name, and it is. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. All right. Amen. All right. Thank you all. Thank you so, all. so very Thank much. You. We're going to close Hallelujah. out. Beautiful. Thank you again for our special guest. Thank you all right. for staying Amen. with us for over an hour and a half, hour and a half. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. It was worth it. Beautiful. It was worth it. Every minute. Every minute. Galaxy you, 850. What's, what's your name again? Um, it's Marcy, Marcy Deloney. That's our Marcy. Our comedian. Yeah. I'm going to ask. Our holy um, comedian. I don't want to. I want to follow protocol with family, uh, but yeah. I'm going to reach out to your mother-in-law and to. Um, no, I'm her mother. I'm that's her mother. mother. Oh, that's an oh my that's god. My mother. Mother. We don't. You, we don't. Oh, you're not worthy, oh, right? Oh, you're right. 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 And your mother, I pray that you all will join us uh, next week. Okay. Amen. Let me see. Yes. That's fine. Oh, next That's fine. I got my schedule in front of me now. So hey, big baby. Uh, I, Hello. If, if you all just got everybody on, and there's still 914 the people in Nevada. That's my granddaughter all the way from Nevada on the line. Who's that? Deidre. Deidre. Hello. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. And and she had her other granddaughter, Michelle Gorham, was on the line. Oh, was on the line. I didn't Glory. know that. For an hour wow. and a half. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> just went. Yeah, Michelle. So, so <laughs> next week. Next week, I need a picture, and I'm gonna get off. But I, I need, I would, you all that are live looking at this, this has never happened before. So this is a miracle that I got a whole yeah, family of survivors. God. That's God. Survivors God. from COVID. This is God. Yes. This is a hand of God that's moving yes. right now to yes. say to me confirmation. Mm -hmm. so you started the last year, this year, 2021, and you ended it on praise, prayers, and worship. And I'm going to open it again in prayer, praise, worship. And, and we had no idea what direction God was going to take us. Mm -hmm. All he said was do it. He also gave us the blessing to do two 16-hour prayers with 75, 70 people that prayed for, for 16 hours, 16 different prayer partners twice this 2020 year, 21. And yeah. I don't know all the people that prayed. Mother Caroline, I don't know all the people. He said, ask, can people stand with you for one hour? Mm. That's God, you all. Yeah. One hour. And and miraculously, even when I didn't know where the people were coming from, I didn't ask for no phone numbers. He said, to ask the people that are the prayer leaders to partner with you. And so March 19th, we're doing uh, a 24-hour prayer. I'm looking for people from Brazil, Nigeria, looking for people from uh, Australia, from the seven different continents, India. So we, we're needing eight more people from across the globe to cover uh, 24 hours. That's, the, that's what God gave me to do. And so I'm going to be obedient to that. So I pray for your, um, I ask you to pray for us as we go forward. Amen. Amen. So for anyone that's willing to, to pray and have their own uh, prayer ministry. Uh, this, this is not showboating. This is serious prayer warfare. To, and, the, and the focus is returning to God because God is speaking to the world and the churches, God is speaking to the body of Christ. Yeah. Prayer has to become a foundation of the first priority in the house of God, in your yeah. churches and in our families. 
And that's why I'm under such attack in my own family because they're not there. But I remember where I was mm. and I remember my disobedience. So I want you to, to, to couple with us and partner with us in prayer and keep me in your prayers. God bless you. And I will reach out to you tomorrow. God bless you. And get the information and move forward. God bless everybody. Amen. God bless you all. Love you all. God bless. Love you all. God bless. Amen. Love you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, Jesus. Can't even cut it off.